All right, everyone. Today is the day. Patch 2.1 officially launched in game. And if you actually go to the news section on the left side of the screen, you'll see here at the very top update news version 2.10.0. So the patch notes are also available in game. And there were actually some changes since the last version of the notes that we actually saw. And what I wanted to do today is really focus on one thing in particular because there's actually quite a bit of stuff to go over here. And I have my opinions to give on a lot of the stuff that was added to the game but I really wanted to focus on the very first thing which is the bazaar because there have not only been some changes since the last version that we saw the prices are a little bit different but also we now know how many gold bars you actually get per victory how many gold bars you're going to get each week at the arena reset and you can kind of line up the prices of how much stuff costs in the bazaar to see if it's going to be worth it or not or whether it's just going to end up taking too long so just a rough overview here of the actual notes though gold bars and the bazaar that's what i wanted to focus on of course we also have those bazaar exclusive accessories which we'll talk a little bit about because you can actually buy them in the bazaar and the price on them seems pretty low in comparison to a lot of the other stuff but of course the really big catch is there's so much rng because not only do you have to get the right type of accessory and you have to roll the good stats on it but you also have to get the right faction so even though they might seem really cheap there's so many layers of rng you probably have to buy a ton of them in order to actually get the ones that you are looking for so you've got the cleansing one uh, and you've got the refresh one uh, which actually prevents the skill from going on cooldown cleansing of course removes the debuff champion fragments this is something that i'll probably focus on in more detail in a video in the future and it's a good one to actually wait a little bit because we don't really have a whole lot about champion fragments right now except for the fact that Horden is the first champion in here and we've had some confirmation from the diamond that there's going to be something related to this coming in game soon but the real question is will you be able to end up getting all 100 of the shards because this is one of those things where if even if you have 99 out of 100 shards it's basically like they're useless unless you can find a way to get that very last one because they are champion specific so you cannot use the Horden fragments for somebody else for example you'd have to get that very last one so we'll find out a bit more info about that as time goes on and as we see more stuff in game related to the champion fragments Next up here, we've got the more daily logger rewards. They did extend this. Today is the first day that you can uh, start getting your new daily logins. So those of you guys who have been playing the game for a very long time and logging in every day like me, uh, day 181 is where we start off here. And just a quick glance through, they look pretty similar. I still think uh, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just selection bias. But I want to say the first of the 90 days still seems like it has the best rewards overall. Uh, but I, I could be wrong on that. It's been a while since I've actually been in the days 1 through 90 at this point. Um, and I don't really even remember the last set of rewards very well. But it seems pretty typical uh, compared to the last login rewards. Of course, we have some new champions here as well. And getting uh, into the list more here, what else do we have? So champion fragments, more daily login rewards, a little bit more information about the new champions, which should be in the index now. I know I've spent a couple of videos uh, really getting into that in a bit more detail, though. Tag team arena improvements and champion fixes. And there's actually quite a bit of stuff here. Visual fixes, game bug fixes, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, today I really wanted to get into the details of the bazaar. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So if we go to the arena, we go to tag team arena. First of all, uh, you can actually see the number of gold bars that you end up getting per victory um, in the actual battle screen here. But if you end up going to the tier screen, you'll also see there are a couple of changes here. You can see the number that you end up getting per battle, as well as this number here at the bottom, which is the number that you get as a bonus at the weekly reset. So these numbers here at the bottom are only once per week. Also, very importantly, the battle number is based off of each victory. So you can actually get triple that if you win all three battles in the tag team arena. Uh, so getting into these numbers here, you can see I have not been taking tag team arena seriously at all. I could actually be, I think, all the way up to silver one by now, but I did not rank up the last couple of times. Um, and going all the way up to here, gold four, you can see that you can get up to 45 gold bars per battle and 5,600 as a reward 
for your weekly placement. But a really important thing to note about the tag team arena, and I don't know if people have stressed this enough yet, is it's very difficult to use these numbers here at the very end for your calculations um, for how often you're going to be able to buy stuff in the bazaar. Because tag team arena, unlike the regular arena, it all functions like platinum in terms of the number of people who are allowed in each tier. So there is a very competitive limit here. And even, uh, you know, just gold one, 3,125 players. Gold four, 1,250 players. Even in silver here, you know, there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of casual players who are never going to be able to get to these ranks and they'll never be able to get the number of gold bars as the top players who, of course, are farming in the top tiers of gold. So very, very important. That's why when I give you guys the numbers here of how often you'll be able to buy some of the stuff, uh, it's important to note that the best case scenario is not going to be reasonable for most people playing the game. There's going to be a best case scenario if you're in gold four, of course, that's only 1,250 people. Um, and if you're not anywhere close to that, it's going to take you a lot longer in order to end up buying this stuff. Um, that is in addition to, of course, a lot of stuff being blocked off here and that you won't even be able to buy it. So, you know, the Sacred Shard, the Legendary Skill Tome, you have to get all the way up to gold just in order to actually get those. And I really, really think this is one thing that is absolutely not necessary. You already get way less gold bars by being in the lower tiers. Why essentially double punish people and also prevent them from being able to buy stuff if it's going to take them longer to get it anyway so let's get into some of these actual items here because now we have the official set in stone prices the very first thing that we have here is energy 300 energy for 1000 gold bars now it's really interesting to compare this stuff to like the price of a sacred shard and the price of a legendary skill tome so if you wanted to spend the same amount of gold bars on energy versus a legendary skill tome, you would end up getting yourself something like 7,000, 7,500 energy, which is pretty crazy. I don't know, what would you guys rather have? 7,000 to 7,500 energy or a legendary skill tome? Um, another important thing is what the actual cooldown period is going to be on these items. Now, I'm guessing it's probably going to be shorter on the lower tier items than on the higher tier items, but I could be completely wrong. I have not figured out any set in stone system that player m uses they tend to be very sneaky with this sort of stuff so question that i actually have for you guys is if you have bought anything in the tag team arena at all even if it's the, the cheapest thing which is silver i would not recommend buying silver though out of everything that's probably the worst thing to actually buy but if you do buy anything here, let me know what the cooldown period is before you can end up buying it again. Let's see if we can sort of get those numbers together. What I'm really interested in is the Ancient Shard because that seems to actually be at a fairly reasonable price here. I think out of everything in the actual bazaar, the Ancient Shard is, um, you know, at one of the better price points compared to a lot of the other stuff. And if you guys have bought the Ancient Shard, let me know how long, again, it will be until you can buy another one. And player definitely do something sneaky here where they make it so that the ancient chart even though it seems like it's a good price point and you can buy it in bronze if it has a week or so cooldown period before you can buy it again well you know that's you got to work around that i guess so you know you get the energy here which i think is probably not the worst thing i think out of everything the worst things are uh you know like the void shard it seems pretty crazy to me that the ancient shard is 1200 gold bars but the void shard is 15,000. That's 12 times more expensive, more than that, 12 and a half times more expensive for the Void Shard compared to the Ancient Shards. So you could buy 12 and a half Ancient Shards for the same price of Void Shards. And I know Void Shards are more valuable, of course, but 12 and a half times more valuable, that's absolutely crazy. I would say maybe two to three times more valuable, and some people would probably even say that's pushing it right there. So that's probably one of the worst buys. The chickens are very, very expensive, and the prices don't really make a whole lot of sense. Like 10,000 gold bars for a rank 4 chicken compared to 20,000 gold bars for a rank 5 chicken. And I'll tell you that a rank 5 chicken gives you a lot more than twice the value in terms of experience and how much it's going to save you with farming compared to a rank 4 chicken. But, you know, the end all to these prices is also the cooldown period. You know, if the cooldown period for the really good valued items is really really long that it doesn't really matter even though they might be a good value it's going to be a long time before you're actually able to buy them again 
So another thing that I wanted to mention is the actual accessories because you have them available here in silver and in gold and they actually seem like they are a pretty good price point here, 200 and 400. But I'm bringing back what I said earlier in the video is even though they seem like a really good price point, you have to get really, really lucky in order to actually end up getting an accessory that you probably really want because there's several layers of RNG. First of all, you have to get good stats on it. If it doesn't have good stats, you're not gonna use it, right? Uh, second of all, you have to actually get uh, the set that you're looking for. There's two types of set, the cooldown one and the, um, the debuff one. And then on top of that, you also have to get the correct faction as well. So all those layers of RNG, you could easily buy dozens or even hundreds of these accessories before you get one that's even close to usable. So keep that in mind, as well as the cooldown period. Rare skill tome is 1,000. Epic skill tomes are 13,000. Legendary skill tomes are 25,000. Uh, that's a pretty darn big jump from the rare skill tomes up to the epic skill tomes. So the epic to the legendary of a difference of, you know, about twice as expensive. I mean, I think they're both overpriced, but the rare one seems really, really weird uh, in comparison to the price point of the epic. So silver, this is something I would absolutely just skip out on 100%. The ancient shards, probably one of the better things, probably also skip out on the rank three chicken. I mean, if you think about it, 300 energy versus one rank three chicken, you are always going to be able to get more out of 300 energy than one rank three chicken. Always, always, always. So this is kind of an example here of, I think Polarium is a bit of out of touch with their own game and the value of things if they think that a rank three chicken is worth anywhere even close to the value of 300 energy. So that's another one that I would probably skip out on. Accessories, these could turn out to be good, but you're just gonna have to buy so many of them to get something decent. So very, very big gamble. Epic skill tone, very expensive. Void shards, also very expensive. And honestly, pretty much everything uh, past silver is just really, really expensive. The only other thing that seems decent, maybe, is the uh, gold accessory right here for 400, um, which is probably going to be a bit better, probably higher star. Maybe this will include legendaries, whereas the silver one will not. But once again, very big gamble. And the last thing I wanted to end off here on is the actual numbers. And, uh, you know, how many gold bars are you reasonably, reasonably going to be able to get here? Now, if you are a high tier gold four player, uh, you know, this is only a very limited number of people playing the game. So um, I'll give you guys these numbers here, but I want to give you the more realistic numbers afterwards as to what most people will probably expect to get. So, you know, if you're somewhere in the gold, uh, you know, you're going to be getting roughly, you know, 30 to 45 or so, 35 to 45 gold bars per victory. Uh, if you win all three matches every single time, which is also pretty unlikely, I mean, you're probably going to lose some matches as well, unless you're one of the top whales in the game. You know, you're looking at roughly 100 gold bars per arena token. That means that you're getting roughly 1,000 gold bars for one full arena refill worth of tokens. And this is once per day, unless, of course, you decide to spend gems to refill your tokens. So you're looking at 7,000 or so gold bars per week just from the actual battles. Um, and then an additional, you know, four to 5,000, four to 5,500 gold bars from your weekly bonus as well. So when you add that all up, you're looking at anywhere between 10 to 15,000 gold bars for a high end player without refills. And you could bump that up easily to now, you know, 15 to 25,000 gold bars per week if you do decide to spend gems on refills. So high-end players might be able to end up buying, you know, one of these top tier items like a legendary book or a sacred shard, you know, a little bit less often than once per week or so, maybe every 10 days. But that is a top tier player who is consistently able to stay in these high tiers. Now, most other people, first of all, they won't even be able to buy that stuff anyway, which is a huge argument for, you know, if it's going to take longer, just let people buy it anyway. But it would end up taking you, let's just say, instead of being a gold player, Player, you know, you're, it's more realistic that you're a silver player. Um, and now instead of the thousand per day, you're probably going to be closer to maybe 500 gold bars per day. And that's still assuming that you win most of your battles and that you're not losing too often. Of course, uh, not going to be spending gems on refills. And then, of course, the bonus of, you know, an additional 2,000 to 3,000 gold bars per week. So you're looking at about 3,500 gold bars per week from the actual battles, and then an additional 2,000 to 3,500 gold bars from your weekly. So you're looking at, you know, between 5,000 to 7,000 gold bars 
per week as a, you know, silver player between ranks one through four. That means that if you did end up saving up the gold bars for one of these legendary skill tones or sacred shards, it would take you anywhere between like 25 to 40 days to end up buying that. Big difference between the 7 to 10 days or so that it would take a, a top tier player to get. So why punish people and not allow them to buy the stuff if it's going to take them, you know, three times as long to buy it anyway. It just feels super unnecessary. And I absolutely think that is a major change that they need to be making to the bazaar. Open this stuff up to everyone. So um, I wanted to leave off with those numbers. Let me know what you guys think about this. And of course, there's plenty of other stuff to talk about in this update as well. But I wanted to leave it here because we're obviously at a long enough video already. And maybe in the future, um, I will post some updates and opinions about some of the other stuff in this update as well. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you want more videos like this in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. Feel free to leave a quick like as well. It means more than you can imagine. So thank you to all of you who decide to do that. Really, really do appreciate it, everyone. And more Raid Shadow Legends videos should be popping up on the screen right about now or in the suggested videos to your right or below. Feel free to check them out. More guides, tutorials, and fun stuff just like this. But if not, until next time, have a fantastic day, everyone. Take care. This is Salt of the Salty Guild, signing out.